little car. It's still got a bunch of quirks, but I mean, this thing's pretty legit for a car that just got drug out of a field and put on the road. Like, it's a good little rig. Airbag the front. The front is like, it's slammed, it's low. I didn't do shocks on it, so it's kind of like, kind of ghetto how it's all set up just because it's unfinished. Um, but it actually drives and runs and gets around pretty good. Surprisingly, little hop, very little hop from the bags. They seem to dampen quite a bit more than a traditional coil spring would do. So, enough about that. It's time to get this thing ready. Hang on. Time to get this thing ready for a road trip. David Freiberger called me up to see if I wanted to come down to the duct tape drags, and I was like, I want to go, but I want to drive something cool. So, here we go. We're going to Here's the plan. The Mustang has cool front suspension, but the rear is bone stock and it's not very low. I can't have this thing not being low enough. So it's time to get this thing in the air, start tearing into the rear to see what it's gonna take to get it to lay on the ground, just like the front does. And along the way, I'm hoping that we can get a little bit more work done to the front suspension so that it ends up with shocks on it. Hoping that we can tune the carburetor a little better get some stuff dialed in there. All in all, it's just time to make this thing way cooler than it already is and hopefully be ready for a 3,000 mile road trip at the end of all this. So let's tear into it and see what we can make happen. I don't have time to overthink anything on this build. So we're gonna tear wheels off, leaf springs out, shocks out, and then we'll prop up the rear axle and see what kind of space we're working with. If I did my calculations right, should be able to get this thing laying on the ground and keep the stock inner wheel wells in place. I am going to have to like notch the frame and cut a big hole in the floor, but that's kind of standard. If I can get it to lay out though without having to chop the tops of the wheel wells, then we're doing all right. Bump stops out. Pry bar. Pry bar. Alright. We can get some of this stuff out of here now. There's the spring mount, part of a sway bar, and a shock. I think we're ready to put the jack under here and support the rear end, and then I can pull the leaf springs out. That should be a good spot. That'll give us all kinds of room to work. I got all the bolts loose, but this one, it is, it's got like a captured nut thing. That's all broken and rusty. So let's see if I can get it off. Come on, come on out of there. Come on thing. That one bolt is not coming out. Not with a wrench. So I'm gonna use the torch. I think this is the last of the stubborn bolts on this thing. For what I'm doing tonight. Better come out now. All right, that's coming out. 
should have the bolt loose over here. All right, leaf springs, all that suspension is out. Now it's time to jack that axle up and figure out how to get this thing low. Leaf springs and shocks and all the old suspension is out. So I am going to jack it up with the wheels and tires on and that'll kind of show me like how low I can get it without doing any like a notch in the frame and a bunch of chassis work. So I'm going to jack this up and we'll see where everything like stops. And then I'll take some measurements at how much more I need to lower it and that'll tell me how much I need to cut. I've got the axle strapped to a transmission jack right now. Okay. Now we got axle hitting the frame rails and we got the pumpkin hitting the trunk floor and the drive shaft is really close to rubbing in the drive shaft tunnel. So I'll go grab a tape measure and we'll take a couple measurements and see how much lower it needs to go than that. But man, it looks cool. This bumper, this bumper is totally ugly. It's got to go. Hopefully this thing is not too terribly heavy. Come over there. Ugh. Got it. Man, that's nasty. We're back at it Saturday morning. Um, I got the gas tank out last night and got the axle propped up to basically the location where it's gonna live. I've got to do about a three inch notch in the frame or three inch notch in all the sheet metal. So we've got some goals to, to reach. I've got to get this about three inches lower. So we'll be tucking rim to about here. That'll allow these spring perches to kind of lay on the ground. And I still have enough room in the wheel well for all that to happen. So this should all work pretty good. Basically the whole trunk floor is gonna have to go. All right, I think it's ready to start cutting. All the gas tank is out, the fuel lines are out of the way, the wiring and all that stuff's out of the way. I pulled the back seat out up there and made sure there's nothing in the trunk floor. You can see here, there's really no frame rail on these cars, just sort of like a ridge of stamped angle. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come through here and make a long cut across the front. I'm gonna cut back here and then across here and we're gonna get the whole trunk floor out. And then we'll probably go back and like address the frame rail section and see what we wanna do there. So. Ideally, we will probably just cut the frame rail out as well and just build like a square tube structure. I've got, um, I've got like 20 feet of two by two 90 wall and it's not like strong enough for a normal like chassis, but this thing being unibody, that two by two 90 wall is probably still quite a bit more substantial than what we've got to start with. So, all right. Gonna start cutting and grinding, cut and grind, cut and grind, and see if we can get the floor out of that thing. All right, I get a couple of cuts started. Basically, I use the grinder to start and then I'll go back with the sawzall and use that to sort of connect the dots. So I'm gonna get in here and start chopping, see if we can get this floor out. Cut a giant hole in my car. Man, that was good. I cut all of this stuff out. Some of these pieces of metal are just like layers, layers of metal thick just stacked on top of each other. We used a smaller Hercules saw for a while, then I had to break out the bigger battery powered one and it just ate through this stuff. 
So I think I've got the space I need to start figuring out what I'm going to do for frame rails. I'm going to clean up all this junk and jack the axle up and see what we need to do to make this thing lay out. We're getting closer. Check this out. Look at that. We're tucking rim now. I think that just got us another two inch drop. But right now we're kind of dealing with this. We've got the pumpkin hitting the drive shaft tunnel pretty hard right there. So in order to get the next couple inches of drop that we need or another inch of drop we need, I'm going to have to cut the drive shaft tunnel and raise it up. But look at that. Holy cow. All right, I cut the section of the drive shaft tunnel up. I should be able to get this thing to go up and bottom out tires and the wheel wells. As long as these parking brake cables allow me. Tires are bottomed out in the wheel well. Both sides. Parking brake cables are stretched all the way. Drive shaft is clear. Let's see where our measurements are at. I'm looking for 54. We are at 53 and a half. I'm going to call that a win. Tires are going to compress a little bit in the wheel wells. Tires are going to compress a little bit there. I bet you we are going to lay that that spring perch on the ground, no problem. It's the end of the weekend. I didn't get as much done on the Mustang as I wanted to, but I'm not done yet, I guess. We're standing in the trunk here, and basically what I want to try and do tonight is get a tube shot across here so that we have a starting point to start building framework off. I'll probably do that tube across and then we'll do a tube that comes back here and then one that goes all the way across and just kind of create a big square back here. Um, nothing in the trunk is symmetrical at all. Not even these wheel tubs. Like this, this body line over here, this is like, somehow it's like an inch lower than this one over here. So I really don't have a whole lot of good stuff to measure off of other than if I line everything up off of this bottom of this pan here. So I'm going to set a tube in there and we will see if I can get everything to kind of seem pretty square and make something cool out of this. It's Sunday evening and I don't really feel like making a ton of noise, so I'm going to use a plasma cutter rather than the chop saw. Alright, let's go see if this thing fits. See if we're in the ballpark. You guys okay? Hello? Alright. Angles look good. And front to back looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and burn this thing in. I got squirreled in four link land. I'm gonna run airbags on the back of this thing. Um, for sure. I'm running airbags, but I'm also thinking about link systems and how I want to make this thing work. I have the stock spring perch here that I could run like a radius arm or a trailing or a uh, two link on that, which could work pretty good, but I'll end up with a bunch of like drive, drive shaft plunge and like pinion change. Uh, I also welded this bar in and now it kind of took up the space to put a bag right on top of the bar or on top of the axle. So. I'm going over ideas, maybe running the four link all backwards and using like the bag on the link bar. 
one thing about doing the bag, the four link backwards, it does handle a little weird if you have a lot of horsepower. It doesn't really plant the axle to the ground. It does just kind of peels out a lot. So that's like not a big deal in this car because it doesn't make any power. But if I were to put a bunch of power to it, then it might not hook up. I don't know. Anywho, we're going to build the back framework out of here. I'm going to get that tacked in tonight, and then I'll probably think more about this whole four link thing. Let it kind of simmer for a minute. All right, I've got my tubing all cut and fit together pretty well. These are just 45 degree cuts so that I end up with a 90, 90 degree corner. 43 and a half there, 43. I'm gonna go ahead and tack this side first because it's square to the table. So I know that the table is perfectly square. So if I tack that side up, I know it'll be good. And then I can, uh, I can square that side off of this one. So if we're at 43 and a half here, let's tack that up. Should be pretty good. That one had some gaps in it, so I had to be careful not to burn big holes. That looks good. I'm going to sand off a couple of the high spots just because it's going to rest flat on a piece of sheet metal back there. And then we'll go test fit it. Or if it really fits, or if it just doesn't fit at all. And figure out where I fit. There we go. So this should rest up on that. there. Boom. All right, let me grab some clamps and I'll weld this puppy in place. This actually kind of rests right on this piece of sheet metal that's cut all crooked and nasty, which I did all by myself. I'm going to take and measure a few like side to sides, center line, and then once I call that all good, we will weld this thing in place. Pretty rad. Kind of simplifying that whole mess that was um, the trunk floor in here. Sweet. Close ups of the welds. Before I close this out, I wanted to say that I did pick a winner for the uh, Ultimate Adventure bag. It's going to Danger Ranger 2723 on YouTube. He's a fan. He likes bullnose Fords. I can't blame him because that's what Mom Spaghetti is. And since I did kind of a poor job on the thing, he ended up getting scammed out of some money because he was all excited and thought, that one of those scams was like legit. So feel bad. I'm sorry any of that stuff happened, but that's kind of how it goes. I'm learning as well as you guys. And uh, for all of you out there, Danger Ranger 2723, I'll be sending you that gift bag. And then I'm also going to keep going through some of my DMs and stuff, and I'll send out a few of those posters. We'll get all this stuff sorted out over time. I'm new at this, and uh, I guess it all shows. Thank you guys for all your support, though. I appreciate it so much. That's it for this Dirt Head Shed. We'll see you next time.